Good morning. It's about 6.15 a.m. And uh, I'm here at the uh, sand pit here. And I baited this spot yesterday afternoon. Uh, so I'm hoping there's going to be uh, a good concentration of fish browsing around here looking for more. Let's see what happens. Thanks for watching. That didn't take that long. It's only been about 10 minutes. That's some good weight on this fish. No, no, no. Gosh, whenever they swim at me like that, it seems like they're gone, but they're still there. <laughs> I was uh, skeptical if my baiting brought in any fish because the, there's no wind today at all, zero. Water's like glass, and I would think if there's feeding fish, there'd be some kind of uh, bubbles happening on the surface. I think this fish is in a stick down there. Yeah, he's definitely in something. There's a log in the water. I'm going to let him pull a little bit. He's definitely in something. All right. Let's go down there and see what's happening here. Yeah, I feel the line bumping on a log when the fish is pulling. There's this log here, but it didn't look very big. I didn't think it would go very far down in the water. And apparently it does. The fish is still on there. Good, 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 good. He just swam out of it. Good. Yeah. No, no, no. You're not going back there. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. I'm gonna bring you down. You're coming down here with me away from that log. Okay. He's right here. Can't get too close to the water's edge here as I'll sink down to my knees. That's a good fish. Not a dinker. Got him. Got him. Yeah, exactly the action I'm looking for here this morning. And this is a good size fish for this little gravel pit. I'm guessing seven, eight pounds. Good size fish. Gave me a good fight. Got me in a log. And, but I, I just gave it a little time, let him swim out. He swam out into a different direction and got untangled. So, so yeah, good stuff. Early morning, carp feeding. Put him back in the water. Oh, my other rod's just taken off. Perfect timing. All right, get out of here. As I'm releasing that fish, this one takes off. And now I got slack swimming at me, swimming at me. Let's reel down on him. Uh -huh. We are hooked up again. This feels like a much smaller fish. He's coming right towards me. He's coming right in. He's right here already. Ooh. Yeah. I ain't that small. I thought it was a dinker, but it's uh, not, a, not a dinker. He's just swimming at me. Man, he was right here, two feet off the bank. Now he's out there again. That's not a dinker. He was just swimming at me. You, you're, you're sneaky. That's a sneaky fish. All right, come here, sneaky. 
came off. Shoot. All right, it wasn't a giant or anything, but huh, okay. Well, two fish in the first 10 minutes. That's some pretty sweet action. Yeah, I came out here yesterday afternoon and threw out, uh, I don't know, probably about a two gallon bucket full of uh, sweet feed and boiled feed corn and just kind of spread it out probably about 10, 15 yards off the bank here along a, probably a 50 foot stretch of bank. And this mix that I'm putting on the feeder here is more of the same. It's mostly sweet feed and then there's oats to stick it all together. And I think there's some pineapple in here which gives it the moisture and uh, some sweet scent. And the hook bait's still good from that fish so I'm just going to put it right back out there. And the hook bait on that fish that I actually landed did get taken off, so I'm going to replace that real quick. It's, uh, I don't know if I've shown you this yet this morning, it's just spicy boiled feed corn, soaking in sriracha sauce. Okay. Just finally getting that third bait, bait in the water, and this one goes. This is the first uh, bait that has been in the water the whole time. Oh, he's way out there. And I, uh, I'm gonna kind of give him the onions here a little bit and see if I can keep him from getting in that log that that first fish got into. Didn't know there was a log in the water down there. Trying to keep him from getting tangled up in my lines that I just cast it out. Might be too late. No? Yeah, it is too late. Yeah, he's in both my lines. Alright. I gotcha. You just ruined both my rigs that I just cast it out. Of course, it's not the fish's fault. It's my fault for putting my rigs so close together out there. Even though they're not really very close, they just, you know, you know carp, they just swim from left to right, over and over. Getting your stuff tangled is, is their business. So, this guy got himself off the hook in the net, that's nice. Yeah, I'll show you this guy real quick, smaller than the first one, five, six pounds probably. He's got kind of a humpback look going on, oh, kind of a lumpy, bumpy fish, but uh, yeah, hump back. Back in the water he goes. Well, it's only been like 15 minutes. And I've had two fish on the bank and a third almost landed. <laughs> I think that, I don't know, are we getting into, does that qualify? Does it, can I, can I say the bite's on fire? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happens next. If you think about it, if you, when you're saying something's on fire, it should be a bad thing, shouldn't it? I can't really think of any good examples of something that's good when it's on fire. Unless, of course, you're trying to start a campfire or something, I guess. <laughs> so that was uh, another bite. Yeah, I haven't gotten the third rod out yet. I'm gonna get this casted out real quick. And then I'll deal with that. Just kind of slowly trying to figure out what's going on. Hey, what's this? What's this? What's this thing in my mouth? That's a hook in your mouth, sir. Come on in here and let me remove it for you. This feels like a good fish. It's got some good weight. Yeah, a big boil out there. Oh, catfish. 
Should have known that with that type of, the way the drag was peeling off real slow and weird like that. Catfish probably didn't even know he was hooked until I tightened up the line. I didn't know there was any catfish left in this lake. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, I didn't think there's any catfish left in this lake. At least one. Yeah. It looks like an old fish. Another one of these with the head that doesn't match his body. Big head. Probably not getting enough food in this polluted old gravel pit. He does have a unique mark on the tail I want to get on video in case I catch him again. He's got like a uh, black melanistic mark there on his tail. Put him back in the water. All right, dude. Good luck. See you later. Still haven't sat down since I got here, really. Uh -huh. Once again, I am fighting a fish. Please don't tangle my other lines. It's coming right in to say hi. It's right here. Mm hmm. Ah. Oh man, scale on the hook. Huh. Clearly it wasn't a giant fish with scale that size, huh? <laughs> the hook must have ran into his body after it uh, came free from his mouth. Okay. I know people like to comment, you know, whenever I lose fish like that, they'll comment about how I need to use a different hook or smaller hook or doing something different. And uh, there's nothing wrong with this rig. There's nothing wrong with this hook. Uh, these are just small fish, and yeah, if I used a smaller hook, that probably wouldn't happen with these fish. But the target is really the bigger fish, so I want that bigger hook to be stout enough to hold up to a 15-pound fish. And I'd rather lose a few 4-pound uh, fish as a result of that. That's just a, is a result that I'm willing to, to live with. And I put all my gear list in the description, but uh, this is a size 4 uh, laser sharp hook, which a size 4 laser sharp is the equivalent of a size 6 Gamagatsu. Well, it's only 8.30, but uh, it's getting pretty hot, and uh, the morning bite has just turned off. I haven't had a bite in like 45 minutes, so I'm going to call it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.